welcome to another video guys Michael Potts here on this Scepter 36 foot sailboat this is the sailing EV YouTube channel so today is a very special day and the reason is because today's the day I leave south to the Caribbean all right so those of you who've been watching my videos you know all about what's going on but today is the day guys uh, it's right now it's about 6 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, and uh, boat's ready, it's full of diesel, full of propane, full of food, provisioned. Got all my, the boxes have been checked. I got my survey, the survey was successful, I got my navigational extension, and uh, I have the time off work now. So all we need to do now is get this boat across the lake here, and uh, to Oswego, where we're gonna pull the mast down, and we're gonna head down to the Hudson River. So, it's, 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 it's all happening guys, I can't believe it. So, man, it's taken so long to get to this point and uh, I'm very excited, I'm, I'm so excited. I just, I, just wanna, I just wanna get out of here. So I have one quick thing to do on land here and I'm gonna come back to the boat and we are going to strap this lumber in. The lumber is for uh, mass supports. When the mast comes down, I'm gonna build some X's on the front here so I can clear the bridges that we need to, to, to cover. So, essentially, I'm in Frenchman's Bay Marina right now in Canada, and we need to get to Oswego. Now, I have three days to get there, but I'm considering doing just a, a one-shot passage. So, let's, let's get your thoughts on what's happening here. Let's go down and take a look at the, the charts and the wind. Windy.com and see what's going on. All right, so let's go down below. All right, so this is the situation right now. As you can see, there's about eight knots of wind, 13 knots in the center of the lake. All right, so what I need to do is I need to get here. So this is Lake Ontario. I need to get here. Oswego. Okay. So my choices are as follows. I can, this is where I am here in Ajax or excuse me, Pickering. That's where I am right there. Boom. All right. So I got a few options here. Option number one would be to uh, head for Coburg. All right. It's about 40 nautical miles. Get there later tonight before the sun goes down and anchor in here. All right, that's a possibility. And then that would take me into tomorrow where weather permitting, I would do one shot passage all the way across to Oswego, 77.3 nautical miles. I mean, that's that would be the right plan, I think. The, my other option is to go directly Cross. Now, the reason I think this is a good option is because it's 113 nautical miles. The reason I think that's a good option is uh, the weather seems to be in my favor here. I'll show you guys. So, right now it's uh, the 29th. All right, so let's take a look at what the weather's going to be like over the next 24 hours. So, this is, this is later tonight at uh, 2 p.m., 3 p.m later tonight going into Friday so that'd be tomorrow at this time in the morning and there's tomorrow right now pretty much so as you can see there's calm conditions I look there's no there's no rain or anything there's no clouds it looks like it's gonna be around between 11 and 15 degrees so if basically it's gonna take me 20 24 hours to get to Oswego if I just sail there right now. So I'm thinking about doing that. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna do what I usually do, which is get out on the lake and see where we're at, because you never know until you're actually out there. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go accomplish my mission on shore. I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna start strapping things down. Uh, I was gonna go for a pump out. Um, I'm not going to do that because the lake is so low right now. This marina is so shallow. I'm, I, I don't even know if we'll get out. So I do know that the owner of the marina, Ian, awesome guy. He's going <laughs> to, if I get stuck, he will tow me out. So 
I bought uh, I bought a depth sounder, handheld depth sounder, and I've been plotting my course out of this marina. So what we're gonna have to do is just start the engine, put it in full, and just ram through the, the silt and get out. Once we're out on the lake, we're free. All right, let's do this. All right, so I'm setting off now. Let's do this. I put it in reverse. So I'm already on the ground here, so. Already on the ground. All right, so I'm gonna get in the dinghy and try and pull myself out of here. All right, Jesus, man, almost there. All right, so I've managed to get off where I was and uh, I'm just waiting for my, I lost my dinghy. It's coming, it's coming at me now. So the wind will blow out here. I'll tie it to the boat and we'll see if I can continue on. Oy, oy. So I'm going to use that uh, little depth uh, meter that I have and plot a course between here and there. And once I get through there, I should be all right. Oh, here comes Jerry to get my dinghy. All right, so I'm 50 feet into my 2,000 nautical mile trip, and I'm aground. So the lake's really low. I kind of anticipated this. Um, so Ian's gonna come out with his diesel, uh, his diesel tugboat, and uh, tow me out of here. So I'm gonna have to wait for that. So I think I'm gonna have something to eat. We'll uh, see what happens. All right, so I made it off the mud. Ian, the marina owner, sent out a guy with a, a 50 horsepower boat and it took us like half an hour. I didn't film it just because I just wanted to get out of here. And uh, so we're on our way, guys. The adventure begins. 2,000 nautical miles. Uh, there's a bit of a wind out. I'm gonna put the sails up in a minute here once I clear the power station. And uh, I think we're gonna do an overnight sail all the way to Oswego. That's the plan at this point. Everything's kind of a mess. There's lines everywhere. It's pretty crazy. Couldn't be a better day for this. The wind's going in the perfect direction and uh, it's very calm out here. There's limited waves, so we're good. Anyway, there's lots of work for me to do. We got 21 hours of sailing to get across to, uh, across to Oswego. And then we gotta get this mast down, mounted horizontally with this lumber. And uh, then we're gonna go all the way to Albany, the Hudson River. So this boat will touch salt water soon enough. It's just a matter of will and just, just sheer endurance here. I just gotta get there and make this happen. All right, I'll check in with you guys in a bit. All right, so I got, got the sails up. There really isn't that much wind right now, so it's not much sailing I can do here. There's like maybe three or four knots, but it's helping me motor here and I'm heading in the right direction. That's the whole, the whole idea. Some of my friends uh, saw me off and beat the horn a minute ago. That was kind of cool. My parents were down there. Man, that lake is really low because I, I thought for a second there that maybe I wasn't going to get out of the marina and this trip would have been stopped in its tracks before I even left. So I'm really happy. Uh, so we got <laughs> 21 hours of sailing left so i'll probably get uh, to oswego maybe nine or ten in the morning tomorrow in the daylight so we will will be sailing all night now i'm going to program the ais uh, so that it warns me if a ship is going to cross in my my path 
and it'll start beeping. And uh, I'm gonna try not to sleep tonight, but if I do, it'll be at the helm, and it will only be very briefly, and then I'll wake up and, and have a look around and then go back to sleep. That's the idea. In theory, anyway, that's what I always thought I would do now that I have an opportunity to actually to try it. I'm sure I'll be doing it in the future here. So, I mean, what does it feel like right now? You know, seeing the power station disappear in my wake here. I mean, is this really the, the beginning of this crazy trip that I've been thinking about for so long? Like, I hope so. All we have to do is to get to the other side of this lake, get the mast down and enter that canal, and then it, it, it's on. And then I'm stuck, actually. Uh, the boat will be officially stuck for six months in the US, so there's nothing I can do about it there. I'll have no other choice but to sail somewhere. Uh, somewhere far away. We're gonna go, okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna go, we'll get to Oswego tomorrow and we'll have the whole weekend, and I'm gonna have to pull these sails down and uh, prep everything, build the X's, that the mass mounts, and get that all sorted and ready. And then when Monday morning at 7 a.m. rolls around, I'm gonna pull up to the, the mass dock and they're gonna pull the mass down and we're gonna man mount it sideways. So still, there's still three days between now and then. So I just wanna get into the US and uh, check in and settle in. There's actually some bad weather coming on Sunday. So that's why I'm like doing a mad dash to get in there. Another thing too is, and this is really stupid of me, but I always double check everything and this time I missed something. And that's when I looked at the language on the website uh, for the New York Canal system, it said um, that as long as I, the way I interpreted it was as long as I'm inside the canal by, the 12th of October, then I'm okay. Then I can get to the other side. And that's not the case. The canals shut down on the 12th, no matter what, even if you're inside. So it's cutting it pretty tight right now. So if we leave on the third, it takes about four or five days to get through the canal system to Albany. So, man, this is gonna be a tough run. We're gonna have to do long days at the helm, motoring. Hopefully nothing happens with the engine. I mean, there's all sorts of variables that could bring this trip to an end really quickly. We just have to manage them and look forward. Uh, I just noticed my fuel gauge isn't working again. That's not good. But I do have uh, two huge cans of diesel and a full tank. So we should be all right. Uh, I'm at 14 amps on my solar right now, so there's lots of power. I can use my desktop. I'm actually gonna go below right now and download, quickly download a bunch of movies so I can watch something uh, as I'm crossing the lake tonight. All right, so. I think I'll fly the drone a little bit later when the sun's a little lower and we'll be right in the middle of the lake. It's going to be cool. So stick around for that. All right, guys. So it's around 6 p.m. And I can still see land over there. There's no ships on the AIS, which is a really good thing. But uh, we're just kind of moving along here. Sails are up. Although there's not much wind. That's okay. So we're going to motor through the night. And we should be there like two in the afternoon tomorrow, hopefully. That's what I'm thinking. There being the Oswego Canal. When I can start to take these sails down, get the mast mounted horizontally, and we can start penetrating the interior of the United States here. Very excited to do that. This will be one of my first nights, uh, you know, out here alone in the middle of the lake motoring. So I'm gonna try and get a tiny bit of sleep at a time and I can set alarms for every hour and try and keep an eye on the on the horizon. So I should be good. So that's it guys. I mean, this is what it's about right here. I can see Toronto in the distance here. It's just beautiful out here. Day number one of the trip. Very excited. All right, I'll check in with you guys in a bit here. Well, this is where we are, 102 nautical miles left. And we're averaging about five and a half knots, 400 feet of water, three knots of wind. And the sun's going down. This is the first sunset of the trip. You can actually see the CN Tower over there. You guys won't be able to see it, but it's over there. 
getting a little cold now, now that the sun's disappearing. I'm gonna put a jacket on. So 100 nautical miles takes, yeah, like, geez, I probably have 20 hours left. So, a lot of time. We'll be in the middle of the lake in about five hours. We're kind of going up the lake, so. As you can see here, that's where we are now. So, we got a long way to go. Very peaceful out here. night I got two ships coming at me you can see them on the AIS right there sun's coming up I actually stopped the boat last night. There was absolutely no wind. I've never seen it so calm and I'm right out in the center of the lake right now. And I just put the sails down and stopped the engine and, and actually got three hours sleep. So I'm now a bit behind. It's saying I'm gonna get to Oswego at 8 p.m. tonight and it's like five in the morning right now. So still a long way to go. Just glad that I avoided these ships here. I'm sure they see me. I got my navigation lights on. And stars were so bright last night. I've never seen stars that bright. It was crazy. You could see the whole Milky Way. And the, the Air Force was out doing, dropping flares in the distance. It was, it was pretty cool. We still have a full day of sailing ahead of us. And it's going to be it's going to be a long run. So we're into day two of the trip. It's about five in the morning. We're doing five knots. The chart plotter says we're gonna be there at 8 p.m. tonight and it's about five in the morning. So we still got 14 more hours of sailing ahead of us. Just motoring right now because there's no wind. I got the sails up. There's just enough to give me like an extra half a knot of uh, speed here. So last night, uh, never seen the stars so bright it was crazy and there was some like the Air Force or the Army was dropping flares in the distance well, I saw these strange lights and it was a beautiful evening uh, actually at one point it was so calm there was like no waves at all I mean it was like bath water it was crazy absolutely still and I dropped the sails and I stopped the engine and actually had a couple hours sleep because I just didn't feel comfortable uh, you know just sleeping while the boat was moving to be honest and uh, I managed to avoid these two ships I could see them on AIS approaching and let's go check out the chart plotter I'll show you guys the AIS So it's saying 9 p.m. now, geez, that we'll get there. It's 
essentially we're in the middle of the lake. I'd say we're about halfway there. So, 516 feet of depth. That's our heading, 118 degrees. Right now we got 2.7 knots of wind coming from the southeast. And uh, we're, I'm trying to average five knots. So, yeah, long way to go still. So it's seven in the morning, and I can actually see Maine Duck. Maine Duck's out there, I can see it with the binoculars. I can see the whole shore of Presque Isle Point, and I've sailed there many times. But the farthest uh, out in the lake I've been was Maine Duck, and I can see it really well. The sun's coming up. Little puffs of wind here and there, but nothing. Nothing that's gonna allow me to shut the motor off. Those two ships have passed. I have a feeling it's gonna get windy, I don't know why. Just the clouds look that way. You can see them moving really really quickly. And it's strange because the wind on the surface is going this way, but the clouds are going this way. So Kind of strange, really peaceful out here. It's 600 feet deep here. What a beautiful morning. Day two of the journey, guys. All right, guys, so 23 nautical miles away from Oswego. I'm in the US waters right now. In the distance there, I can see two massive towers. And this morning they were spewing steam and clouds into the sky but they've stopped all of a sudden which is kind of weird and i can see land here it's the u.s right there and this seems to be the only place i get a cell reception right now so i'm on top of the solar panels enjoying the view so so it's going to be about 6 p.m when i get to oswego or or between 4 and 6 p.m. depends and I'm gonna pull in and check into the US now I've never done this by sailboat so well actually I have but I was really young and wasn't really paying attention this is the first time I've done it on this boat so I got all my passports and all my station license and uh, got all the all the documents I think we'll be all right there's nothing illegal on the boat I, I made sure of that and you know i have my mmsi number I get, you know there's a bunch of hoops you got to jump through to get into the us so i'm going to ask for a year's cruising permit and we'll see what happens apparently we do it by tablet there's like there's like a phone booth you go into and it's got a, like a webcam and a tablet and you you uh push a button and literally a, a customs and border patrol person, you know, ch checks you into the country. So that'll be an interesting little thing. I mean, I'll show you guys how that all works and how it goes down. Now, I'll tell you this: this AIS device that I have, it's a it's it's a game changer for me. So last night, uh, even before I could see the ships visually, I could see them on the handset, which to me was it is amazing you know I, I could see the when I'm gonna cross their path if I'm gonna collide with them what direction they're going their course their speed the name of the ship and uh, time to close uh, proximity it gives you a time of when you'll be closest to them and how far away you'll be it's incredible it's a game changer so really glad I got that that device and uh, with this new radio, I can also get the the other DSC calling channels here in the States, like 
22 Alpha and 21 Alpha, which is like, they do uh, warnings and stuff. It's kind of weird because the clouds are going one way and the one clouds in the distance are going the other way. Those ones are going that way. Those ones are going that way. And they came on the radio this morning and, and were, were saying there's going to be a, a wind alert, a high wind warning for Lake Ontario and Lake Erie, which is pretty far that way. So I think that's what's happening is it just hasn't got here yet. So I can do 20 nautical miles in, in four hours. So I should be into the US in four hours. Now it'll be Friday night there. I'm gonna have to book a slip and dock my boat into, into a slip and pay for the slip. And at that point, I'm gonna begin the, the, the task of uh, taking the sails down, putting them in a bag, in their bags, taking all the ropes apart and then uh, securing all the all of the things that are here. Removing parts of this bimini top so that I can actually get uh, the mast. They're gonna take a crane and take the mast off and we're gonna put it horizontally here. Now I've got a bunch of lumber, which is right there. And I'm gonna build some uh, wooden structures like X's to support the mast so it doesn't damage the decks. That should be pretty simple. What else do I have to do? Uh, I'm just kind of going as I go. I've never done this before, so you know, I've never really checked into a another country on this sailboat. So, very excited about it. Now, last night was strange because I kept thinking of the documentary uh, Deep Water, and uh, there was an around the world yacht race by a yachtsman. I forgot his name right now, but anyway, if you watch that that documentary he says something at one point anyway this guy he, he tried to go around the world and he built the trimaran and anyway it fell apart like at the very beginning of the journey and he, he started forging his records to uh to trick everyone anyway he ended up jumping off the back of his boat and drowning himself that's what they think happened but he left a, a detailed note of what he was thinking and he was talking about how cosmic beings were playing a game with him. And I always thought about like, what does that mean? What, what, what did he mean by that? And it was strange because last night, you know, it was pitch black and I could see the stars and I could see the ships approaching. And when the sun came up, it dawned on me, you know, like you are really, when you're on a body of water and there's no land around you, you're literally on like this little island, you know, on this planet going through the universe. I mean, it's, it's, it really, it was, it was breathtaking. It was something really special. And I stood up here actually, and I looked around and uh, I came to realize, you know, like how crazy <laughs> this, this experience has already been and it's only been two days, so. <laughs> We got lots more time to go, so I give myself a good, good chance of getting through the states, and getting through into the states. Now, what I didn't talk about was uh, the fact that when I interpreted when I interpreted the language on the New York Canal System website, I understood it as I have until the 12th to get into the canal, and then I can make my way and exit. But that's not the case. It closes on the 12th. So Monday is the third. Right now it's Friday. Okay, October 1st, I think. And <laughs> it doesn't leave me much time for error. My main worry was the engine, but she's just been humming along, no issues. Uh, I'm actually gonna, I brought two huge cans of diesel. And I'm gonna see that for some reason my fuel gauge isn't working and I have to fix that. Uh, I'm gonna top up the tanks right now, but I'm gonna stop the engines and just, we'll go under sail power here, even if it's a knot or two. And I'm going to check the oil and really take care of this engine, because this engine's the one thing that's gonna get me through these canals. Now, online it seems to, it seems to say that you can get from uh, the lake, Oswego, to Albany, which is on the Hudson, somewhere between three and five days. 
Okay, so let's say if we left, I get the mast uh, uh, down and everything's fine and I leave on the fourth. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's nine days I'll have, which is more than enough. So I am cutting it a bit short, but barring any problems, mainly engine problems. Engine would be the thing that kills me because if, if I have engine problems and I got to order parts or something goes wrong, I'll be stuck in the canal. And if, I, if I'm not on the Hudson by the 12th, I'm stuck in that canal, which means I'll have to put the boat on the hard somewhere in a marina in the US and literally fly home. So I don't even want to talk about that. That's not going to happen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to I've been making detailed records of each passage and how much fuel and how much time on the engine and uh, I'm gonna do regular oil changes and just really take care of the engine just really keep an eye on it you know I'm gonna go down there right now and have a look because it's been running for for 17 hours now so 17 hours straight I mean I did shut it off last night um, for like an hour or two uh, I always, I, I, I just feel sort of uncomfortable uh, when the boat's moving and sleeping for some reason. I mean, I probably could have got away with it, but I just couldn't do it. So last night I shut the engine off and I, I heaved to, like I backed the sail and just put the, the rudder all the way to port. And uh, I got a, a good like three or four hours sleep and then woke up and it was pitch black and that's when uh, the sun started coming up. Now. I can see the smoke stacks of Oswego, so we're, we're pretty much there. I mean, it, we're pretty much there. So there's the radio they're they're talking about, about the wind warning thing. I just don't see how there's a wind warning right now. It's dead calm here. The, these conditions can change. I'll be I'll be at Oswego before any weather hits, so I'm, I'm very confident that's okay. Now I'm trying to think, like, I could probably save a few bucks uh, instead of uh, paying for a slip here, I could probably anchor somewhere. I'm gonna investigate this little port here and see if there's a place I can anchor. But I need to go into the marina anyway to check in. So uh, the lady's gonna end up charging me. So these are just kinda the price of doing business, you know, like, you know what the weirdest thing is? is this is the longest uh, passage I'll do between here and the Bahamas. Isn't that crazy? If I take the ICW. So, if you look on the map, going the, going that distance, basically I just sailed right up the center of Lake Ontario for like two days, which is crazy. So once you actually get down and into the states and into the, the the ICW, the Intercoastal Waterway, it's just towns in a canal all the way to Miami, like thousand nautical miles of towns and canals and locks. Or I could do the outside. Uh, and do it all in one big go. The problem is, is the current runs north. So you, you gotta be careful there. There is, of course, 80 or so nautical miles where the current runs south, but those are eddies and you, you know, it's that's ocean territory. We're, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But, uh, you know, I saw I saw Toronto disappearing into the wake and I always wondered well, like, what it would be like to imagine that moment and I thought it would be more emotional. The truth is, is I just wanted to, to get out of there and just, just kind of move forward, you know? I, I, I want to, if, if I'm not on the Hudson by the 12th, this trip's not happening. So I'll, I'll, I'll feel a lot better once we're checked into the US and on the, on the canal system making way with a good engine. I, at that point, I think the, the trip will be a for sure thing if I can get through and onto the Hudson. Now I'm trying to figure out, is the Hudson salt water? I don't think so. Maybe it's brackish as you get down to New York. We'll see, it's crazy to think that, you know, within a week from now, we'll be in Manhattan on this boat. I, I mean, we're gonna go under the Brooklyn Bridge. And that's that's crazy to me. It's gonna, we're gonna go right under the Brooklyn Bridge. We'll see it, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible to think that that's even possible. So I've always wanted to go to Manhattan and, and take a look and, and be, there and have time to really enjoy it and we're gonna make some really cool videos about it so give me a like make a comment down below and uh, once we get to Oswego uh, things will be good all right let's just get there 
All right, guys, so it's September 30th, around three o'clock. That is Oswego right there. That's the entrance to the canal that goes down to the ocean and to the Hudson River and onto the ocean. So I'm a Canadian citizen, so I need to check into this country. This is the United States of America. So we're gonna go check in as soon as we get there. Uh, I'm gonna pull the sails sail down right now. Currently motoring, doing about six knots. Conditions are really calm. It's about three knots of wind coming out of the northeast. All right, so, man, this is crazy. It's all happening. Uh, so I got two more days to get these sails sorted and get this, this mast ready to be ripped down and, and mounted horizontally. So I'm gonna go check into the marina and uh, pay, pay for a slip for the weekend until, until Sunday. And uh, my parents are gonna join me tomorrow, which is really cool. And uh, I think that's it for this video. In the next video, next week, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go down the we're gonna go down the Oswego Canal. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna explore all the towns, and uh, eventually we're gonna get to Manhattan. So give me a like, stay tuned, make a comment, and we'll see you in the next one.